All right, for reaction now, we'll bring in Congressman Guy Reschenthaler of Pennsylvania. Now, he sits on the House Judiciary Committee. He was at yesterday's hearing. Um, Congressman, good to see you. What I want to do is play the part where, where your interaction came in to get our viewers caught up, and I'll get your reaction to that. Attorney General Barr was asked a lot of questions. As you know, he didn't get a chance to answer that much. You gave him a shot. Here's that. Do you think it's a myth that Antifa is involved in this anarchy? No, I think Antifa is involved in Portland. So either way, the chairman's comments were, were not correct, were not accurate. I didn't consider them accurate. What about the autonomous zone in Seattle? Uh, Congresswoman Jayapal has said, and I quote, that it's a peaceful protest zone. Is it a peaceful protest zone? No. Uh, as I already said, it's outrageous that, you know, people set themselves up and uh, over a piece of territory uh, where the people in there have not selected them as the government and try to exercise sovereign authority. That's an outrage. So these are some of the questions I expected to be asked. I, I, I didn't realize how partisan, just from a journalistic approach watching it, how partisan it was. Um, why was it so important to get your questions there and get A.G. Barr on the record to, to say what he said? Well, Sean, Emma, first off, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I thought it was really important for me to allow Attorney General Barr to actually finish answering the question. A lot of these Democrats, they had zero concern about actually eliciting truth or any kind of information from the Attorney General. What they wanted to do was they wanted to discredit A.G. Barr getting out ahead of the Durham report, which is going to make the Obama administration, James Comey, uh, look horrible because it's going to show that I think they engage in criminal acts. So one, they want to discredit A.G. Barr ahead of the Durham report. Two, they wanted to get their clip for social media. They wanted to they want to build their online following like they're all uh, little AOCs out there. So they really had zero zero uh, zero incentive on their part to actually listen to the truth. And then finally, they just wanted to show vitriol and animosity toward A.G. Barr. And I tell people, that animosity that you see directed at Attorney General Barr, that animosity you see directed at President Trump, it's really directed at me and you. It's directed at conservatives. It's directed at people who live in so-called flyover country. It's just that Trump and Barr and the administration are between us in the far left social justice Democrats. Don't be fooled. They would treat us the same way if we were in that chair as well. Congressman, what did you learn yesterday from, from hearing A.G. Barr? It's a hearing. We didn't hear much from him. Um, but did we learn anything new? Was there any progress made? Well, we did learn the fact that uh, Chairman Nadler was incorrect. Uh, I actually impeached him through my questioning with A.G. Barr, and I'll explain that. And same with uh, Congresswoman Jayapal, who represents downtown Seattle. Uh, just to give you the background, over the weekend, Jerry Nadler had told a reporter that the talk about Portland being out of control and the 60-some days of chaos are just a quote-unquote myth that's being circulated around in Washington, D.C. Uh, at the same time, you have Congresswoman Jayapal, who constantly is saying that Chaz was a peaceful protest. and It was the summer of love going on. Uh, she was talking about people watching movies and just singing protest songs in uh, in Chaz. So I had the opportunity to hear from the attorney general who just discredited both Chairman Nadler and Jayapal. He said that in Chaz there were assaults, robberies. Uh, he confirmed that a 16 and 19 year old were shot dead. So it completely flies in the face of what uh, Congresswoman Jayapal has been saying. And then as, as far as Portland goes, you heard it in that clip, A.G. Barr said that Antifa is involved. It's incredibly violent. Uh, three, at least three federal officers have been permanently blinded because the protesters are using las lasers to blind officers. So it clearly undercuts Jerry Nadler. And what you really see is you see Nadler, Jayapal, and the far left Democrats engaged in what's called gaslighting, where they, they lie about a blatant fact to discredit their opponents. And thankfully, we have A.G. Barr, we have Republicans on the Judiciary Committee, and media like yourself that exposes what the far left Democrats are doing and that fact that they're engaged in lying and covering up for far left radicals and anarchists. A lot of folks came out afterwards, shared their thoughts. In fact, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had some choice words for the A.G. Take a listen to this. He should be answering for what he did at Lafayette Square, a disgrace. So this, it's really, he was like a blob. He was like a, uh, just a, a, a 
henchman for the president of the United States instead of the attorney general. Look like a blob henchman coming from the House Speaker. Your thoughts? Yeah, that rhetoric doesn't help anybody. It's, it's actually very destructive. And think about the uh, think about just the double standard. If one of us said that Jerry Nadler looked like a blob, it would be all over the media today. But Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, can say that about A.G. Barr, who, who is an esteemed public official, served in, in the government since the days of Ronald Reagan and has a uh, phenomenal reputation. But she also said that A.G. Barr should have been answering. Well, he was trying to answer, and the Democrats kept cutting him off. Uh, so I, I think that I think it's problematic, and and I'm very disappointed that Speaker of the House would stoop to that level and engage in name calling like that. Before I go, let me just say this: as a spectator, Congressman, I'm watching this yesterday. I see you. You come across so polite, and you really do when you're speaking to the Attorney General. There's a lot of respect. There's a lot of politeness, and there's a big contrast, obviously, because it was uncomfortable at times to watch this hearing. What was it like being in that room, perhaps leaving the room when it was all over? What happens then? Was it as contentious as it looked on screen? Well, Sean, thanks for the compliment. I really appreciate it. You, you know, I always say, and like Kevin McCarthy says, if you're, if you're on the position of bringing people freedom, economic prosperity, really the conservative agenda, if we're doing that, then we should be happy about it. We should be courteous with our opponents because at the end of the day, we're on the side of freedom, personal liberty, free people, free markets, and so forth. What I saw from the Democrats, on the other hand, was just sheer emotion, disrespect, uh, and really a lack of decorum. There's no place for that in these hearings, Not no place for that in our society. And the fact that the Democrats are engaging in that behavior shows that they're on the ropes, that they're losing, and they're acting out. And because A.J. Barr was cool, calm, and collected, he was seen as the adult in the room, not Jerry Nadler, who was doing such petty things as depriving him the ability to take a five-minute break to, to run to the restroom and grab a quick bite to eat. It was, it was truly despicable how... Chairman Nadler and the Democrats were acting in that room. I'll leave it right there. Look, I always appreciate the time, Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, Pennsylvania. Good to see you, sir. Thank you very much. You too, Sean.